Hello? Ah, uh, no. I'm sorry. Dorian's not here. She's out of town. Um, uh, I, I don't know where she went or when she'll be back. May I take a... Yes. Actually, we have been having some trouble with, uh, the answering machine. And, uh, I'd be happy to take another message. Yes, I'm writing it down right now. Okay. All right, Miss Stonecliff. Um, um, she will call you. Does she have your number? Okay, good. She'll call you as soon as she can. All right. You're welcome. Kelly, who was that on the phone? Uh, just someone. I could have guessed that myself. It was for Blair. Oh. Did you tell them she was at the Melador office? <laughs> of course I did. Why would I lie? The cops are investigating R.J. Gannon in connection with the Holden kidnapping. I, <laughs> I love you, Briggs. I, that's not something I say a lot. I, you, you, you know what I mean. I, look, just, just, just run it uh, as soon as you can. Oh, and here, here's a headline for you, all right? Uh, jazz man faces music. Yeah, I want it in the next edition. Kevin is going to freak when he has to read the competition's newspaper to figure out who the suspect is. Yeah. Suspect? Is this about the Max Holden case? The kidnapping? Maybe. Oh, don't be coy. It's unappealing. Come on. Tell me before whoever it is hires another lawyer. I don't think so. You don't... Oh, you can't do this to me. You wouldn't. Watch me. Shukara. RJ. <laughs> you better check the name on the door. I'm the older one. Remember the one with the fishing shack? I remember. Hank, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I need some input on your brother. Really? There was sort of an impromptu memorial service for Max's twins yesterday at Rhodey's. R.J. was there. Oh. Actually, he was worried about me. But he seemed quite upset himself. Maybe not about Max, but definitely about those two kids. You think it was genuine? I do. R.J. was my partner. A lot of the time, he was terrific. Unfortunately, some of that turned out to be an act, but I feel... No. I believe that it was based on something real. Something decent inside him. And you want to know how real, how decent, and how deep it's buried. Exactly. You know, maybe you should just ask me how many... Angels can dance on the head of a pen. At least I can take an educated guess. Is it that tough a question? Well, you're asking me to tell you who my brother really is. I guess I am. Well, you know, it kills me to admit it. But after all of these years, I still don't know. Where the hell are you? Come on, Claude. Whole damn town breathing down my neck because of you. Well, finally, what took you so long? I was given blood, all right? What, you think this is funny? What happened to no more contact? Do you think I enjoy looking at your ugly face? I do not. It only reminds me of your colossal stupidity. But I've got to find those kids. And you, unfortunately, are the only lead I've got. One Life Central. Max Holden is convinced R.J. is involved in this somehow. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
What do the police think? Well, Bo, he's, uh, he's heading in that same direction. And you? <laughs> me. Here you go. Thanks. Well, you know, R.J., he's, uh, he's let me down more times than I can count, and there's not a whole lot that I put past R.J. But whatever else he may be, he's no kidnapper. Does he know you feel that way? Well, I went to the club and I told him the other day that I was on his side and I would do what I could to help him deal with the accusations. I told him that I was ready and willing to go to bat for him, but R.J. and his R.J. way, he just turned me flat down. Why? Because that's what R.J. does. You know, in his mind, it, no matter what I say, I've already convicted him. And that's not what I meant at all. So what did you mean? I meant what I said, that I wanted to help my brother. I mean, what, is that so hard to imagine? I mean, come on, heaven forbid that someone could take me at my word. I'm sorry. Look, w what is this all about anyway? Your partnership with R.J. is over. Well, maybe not. R.J. offered to bail me out. Financially? Well, he suggested a probationary arrangement. On my terms. Are you considering it? I have to. Max is broke. And even if he weren't, his heart's just not into it anymore. With RJ, the, the heat, the energy, that was never the problem. When we were cooking, we were really cooking. Yeah, well, this time around, the heat's gonna come down on RJ, whether he's guilty or not. And if you go back into partnership with him, you're bound to feel some of that heat yourself. So, should I stay out of RJ's kitchen? Look, I didn't say that. Okay. It would help if you told me what Bo Buchanan has in the way of hard evidence. I can't discuss that with you. Hell, I shouldn't have told you that RJ's a suspect. Hey, no one will hear from me. I believe a person is innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, well, so do I, no matter what RJ says. Are you going to take him up on his offer? I honestly don't know. He seemed pretty sincere. And if anyone understands how important Blue Jay is to me, he does. If he had an ulterior motive, I didn't see it. And believe me, I was looking. What about negative publicity? I can handle that. But what I couldn't take is finding out that R.J. had anything to do with this kidnapping. Yeah, neither could I. But at this point, I don't think he did. You hired those kidnappers. You must know something. I told you I don't. You gotta believe oh, me. Oh, give me one good reason. In the first place, I didn't know Goldberg and Lennon were gonna sell those kids. So how could I possibly know where they'd end up? Well, I don't know. But Goldberg and Lennon are dead, so that leaves you. If I could help you, I would. Oh, that is the wrong answer. Well, what do you want me to do? Call a psychic? You worked with those creeps before. You don't expect me to believe that you have no idea how they would go about selling some children. It is not the kind of thing you look up in the yellow pages. I always kept them at arm's length. Sort of the way you do with me. So I have no clue who their contacts were. I'm sorry. Listen to me. I'm in this mess because of you. I asked you to bankrupt the guy, not snatch his kids. So if I go down, you go down. If the cops come and question you about me, don't screw up the cover story. You came to me to borrow money, I said no. Is that simple enough? Yeah. Now, Holden's kids are out there somewhere. If that diseased brain of yours comes up with anything that remotely resembles a clue, you tell me. I will. I swear. But don't expect too much, huh? You might have to accept the fact that when Goldberg and Lennon died, basically, so did those kids. Todd, I really need to know who the suspect is. Oh, you do? Yes. Uh, so you can represent him or, or her? Is, is that it? Yes. I'm a little lost here. Since when is it my responsibility to find your clients? It's not. But that's not the point. Oh, no, that's exactly the point. 
You know what? You stay here. I'll go fetch our prenup and we can check it out. All I'm asking for is a name, please. And you'll have a name. It'll be in the sun. You can read all about it. But so can every other defense attorney in Landview. Later is no good. The information will be useless. Oh, you're right. I... You know, it's kind of like my business. Let's say that the banner scooped me and you knew about it and, and, and you couldn't tip me off with a lousy 20-second phone call. That was a completely different situation. How is that a different situation? Well, there was a, a, there was a certain amount of hostility between us at the time and I may have uh, overreacted to it slightly. And now everything is wine and roses. No, but things are better. Okay, beer and roses. Please, please tell me who the suspect is. This, this, this could be high, high profile, a career maker. I haven't had a big case in months. My, my practice is going down the tubes. I've been reduced to passing out my business card at the police station. Help me. Sorry, Delgado. No dice. How can you be so petty? Cool. It's a gift. Why can't you ever give me a break? You're the one who said that you wanted to stick to the legal terms of our contract. That's true. I did. Because I understand it. It makes sense in its sick sort of way. Everything else about this marriage is a mystery. Because of me? Yes. No matter how much we go through together, you make it impossible for me to feel as though there's anything more between us than a lousy piece of paper. There are five million pieces of paper. Oh, don't worry, Todd. I haven't forgotten about the money. How could I when you never stop bringing it up? Good morning, Kaya. How's your five million dollars? I don't say that. Uh, you're right. You skip the good morning part. Reminds me of how people used to treat my father on the elevators and in the hallways of our building. They paid his salary so they didn't even have to acknowledge his existence. After all, he was only the hired help. All right, you know what? You want a break? I'll give you a break. You can have the whole run of the place. You can boss around whoever you want. Shorty and I, we're going to go away for the weekend. What? Where? What do you care? I treat you like dirt, remember? And if you get bored, I'm sure you can give the Reverend Sanctimonious a call. I'm sure he'd, he'd rip his collar right off, come skipping right over here. Why do you... Why do you have to be like this, Todd? It's just the kind of guy I am. Can I go now? I will call back. Have it your way, Todd. But I am going to find out who the suspect is, with or without you. Well, I guess it was too much to hope for that you could explain your brother to me over one cup of coffee. I'm afraid so. But don't worry. I'm going to do some long, hard thinking before I even consider taking him up on his offer. Good idea. But I gotta admit, I miss the R.J. that I met when I first came to Landview. He charmed the socks right off of me. He was a straight shooter. You sure you're not mixing us up again? <laughs> Positive. <laughs> you don't have that dark side. That thing that got me in this predicament in the first place. Oh, I don't know if I... Maybe I'm a fool not to run away from here while I still have the legs to carry me. I could head to Philly or up to New York. I had some great times there. What the heck am I doing in Landview, Pennsylvania, anyway? Helping me clean fish, for one thing. That's 
was on Lake Egan. Ah, close enough, still Lantano County. Oh, snagged on a technicality. Uh -huh. So how do you plan on reeling me in? By telling you how much I'm gonna hate seeing you go. Really? Absolutely. What are you reading? Magazine. Anything interesting? Nope. Why don't we go shopping? No, thanks. I wish I knew where Mel was. I know he's supposed to be on assignment, but Vicky flatly refused to tell me where. Are you sure he didn't mention anything to you? I have no idea where Mel is right now. Vicky. Of course, she just loves keeping me in the dark, doesn't she? I can remember one particularly unpleasant stint when she locked me Aunt in. Dorian, I'm not in the mood for your Vicky bashing. Excuse me? Kelly, you're upset, aren't you? That we had to take your mother back to California. But I can assure you, she really is better off in the institution. Well, she certainly is safe there. Exactly. Are you sure you're all right? You seem distant. I'm fine. You miss your mother, don't you? Of course I do. The two of you were so lovely together. It was almost as if you had never been apart. Though it did make me realize that no matter how hard I may have tried over the last few years, I could never be a true replacement for her. No, you are not my mother. <laughs> if it's any consolation, I love you as much as if I were your mother. Kelly. There isn't anything that I wouldn't do for you. You know that, don't you? Anything you want, anything at all, you just ask me. You know that, don't you? Yes, I do know that. You have been the most generous woman I have ever known. And I will never forget everything that you have done for me and my mother. Which makes it so difficult to understand some of the other things you do. Now, what do you mean by that? I, I, don't, I don't know. I just, I'm tired. That's all. Oh, hey, why don't you go upstairs and I'm lie fine. Down? I just, I think I'd rather lay down here, stretch out on the couch, and read my magazine. Fine. Are you sure you're all right? I'm fine. Really? Okay. I'm off to, uh, Nellador. See you later. Yes, sweetheart. I'll see you later. It's me. Are you alone? Yes, I'm alone. Look, I don't know how much longer I can take this. When are you coming back? It's all right. I'm on my way. As a matter of fact, they just announced my flight, so I can't stay on the phone long. Uh, I've got to see you and Cassie as soon as possible when I get home. Listen, do me a favor. Call Cassie, and will you two meet me at the houseboat later? I've come up with something that's a lot more than we bargained for. Hey, Kel. What are you doing here? Oh, I was just in the neighborhood, and I figured... Okay. I, I came by to see how it went in California. With your mother. Okay, uh, come on in. Thanks. 
It, um, it went as well as could be expected, I guess. We got her back to the institution, and her doctor adjusted the medication, and, and she was a lot more stable when we left. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. What about you? I, I feel strange. In less than two months, I went from being completely terrified of my mother to missing her like crazy. With a lot of other stops in between. Hell of a trip. Yeah. I'm realizing now, though, that she, she's better off in California, you know? And away from... Away from what? Nothing. No, 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 not nothing. Story, right? What would make you say that? Oh, I recognize that look. The look that says Dorian's disappointed you yet again. And you still feel the need to protect her. It was a little difficult, you know, living in the same house with my Aunt Dorian and my mother, you know? I mean, I don't understand why things are so complicated in my family. Maybe because Dorian's always involved? Maybe. Just how long are you going to go on defending her? Carlotta. Eli. Good morning. Hi and bye. Hey, thanks for everything. Don't mention it. Later, Eli. <laughs> Jakar didn't have to run off on my account. Oh, she just wanted to ask me a couple of questions about RJ. What's up? Here's your weekly payment. Ooh, payday. Yeah. Cash, cool, thanks. You have the damages fixed? Yeah, I paid for it myself. You know, I mean, it's starting to get cold out there. I wanted to get the bike back on the road. <laughs> cool. Maybe uh, I could have a ride sometime or something. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see about that. Um, aren't you going to be late for your community service, young man? Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. All right. Take care, Red. Huh. <laughs> Dinner's at six. Okay. <laughs> Seems to be a different kid. Yeah, he is. But I have to admit, I'm still praying and keeping my fingers crossed. Okay. So. Mm. How are you doing? Good. So, what, uh, what did Jakara want to ask you about RJ? I thought you said that she was through with him. Well, I thought she was. But apparently RJ wants to kickstart the partnership. And what does that have to do with you? Well, she was just checking out a rumor that he may be connected to the kidnapping of Max Holden's twins because of the feuding over Blue Jay. Oh, Hank, is there any truth in it? Well, not in my opinion. But... I, myself, will be keeping my fingers crossed until Bo completes his investigation. Briggs? Well, you don't get enough of me at the office? I've been calling you, but uh, you're not answering your phone. Well, I got a headache. Well, from the look you're giving me, I'm about to get another one. Our source at the police department is getting cold feet. Why don't you go down there and bring him a nice pair of warm socks? Apparently, Commissioner Buchanan is adamant about stopping police leaks, and our guy is afraid he'll be exposed if we run the story about the kidnapping suspect. Yeah, well, he should have thought about that before he blabbed to us. We, uh, just started the press run. We can stop it and pull the article. Have you been sniffing glue again, Briggs? Not enough. Huh. So the source is backing away from his statement? No, but if... So he says it's true, he just doesn't want us to run it? Yes, but... Well, the... run it, Briggs. He'll never give us another scoop. So what? How hard would it be to get another snitch down at the police department? I'm telling you, Briggs, this is the one. This is the one that's going to put me right ahead of the banner, that, that, that highbrow piece of garbage. <coughs> we were just uh, talking about you. My word, is that so? Hello, Charlie. You're looking very, very well. Oh, well thank you, Vicky. You, you are, too. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Star. <clears throat> I better be get going. Don't screw up, Briggs. Yeah. Charlie, 
your old job is always available for you, you know. So you just give me a call in case you decide you're sick and tired of working for the sun. Hmm? That lowbrow piece of garbage. Oh, you heard that. I have very keen hearing, which I have put to very good use this morning, listening to your lovely daughter. She is quite the conversationalist. In fact, she told me everything. Several ABC Tuesday. Goodbye, Sunshine. I will see you very soon. I love you. So, um, what exactly did Star tell you? Hmm? Oh! Well, as I said, everything. Everything. I know her favorite color. I know what she had for breakfast. I know all about somebody named Moose. She's absolutely delightful. Yeah. She can't shut up these days. I'll have to grill her later to see if you spilled any of the banner's secrets. Uh -huh. Not that I'll need them today. Meaning? Well, you'll see. Provided you're willing to plop down enough dough to pick yourself up a copy of The Sun. My goodness. My goodness, Victor Lord. What about him? Oh, just for one brief moment, you reminded me of our father. See, he used to do that. He used to drop some sort of hint about a tantalizing story that was going to appear in the next edition of The Banner, and then not tell you what it was. Even way back then, I found that kind of coyness unappealing. The guy sold a lot of papers. So what? And besides... I don't want to talk about the newspaper business. I'm much more interested in finding out about my brother's personal life. What personal life? How's Taya? I have no idea. She pretty much keeps to herself these days. Well, now, that's not the impression I got at Thanksgiving. In fact, she was downright sociable after you stormed out of the house. Go figure. And it was very apparent to all of us that family means a great deal to her. So I would say you're lucky to have her in your life. Lucky. Hmm. Luck has never really had anything to do with my life. Now, I know this is none of my business, but I'm going to say it anyway. Oh, there's a shock. I don't know what games you're playing with, Taya. I just hope you know what you're putting at risk. You see, your daughter is positively thriving right now. And I have no doubt that this Taya's presence and influence are a significant contributing factor to that. So, if I were you... You're not me. Lord, no. But if I were you... I'd be very careful about alienating the one person who's having a positive effect on my daughter. Although I'm quite sure you're busily engaged in doing just that. Are you done? Yeah. Good, because I have something to say. Now, you don't live here. Now, I'm mm -hmm. glad that you don't live here. Me too. But if you did, you would know that I'm not playing any games with Delgado, that Delgado is not playing with me. Our marriage is... It's disturbed and peculiar. Complicated. Oh, Todd, every marriage is complicated. Well, you ought to know you've had enough of them. Oh, good. You can benefit from my years of experience. I think you have to decide just what kind of marriage you want before the marriage that you bought comes back to haunt you and your daughter. Been a pleasure bantering with you. Yeah, as as usual. always. Dorian didn't do anything to defend. Yeah, right. Come on, Kel. This is Joey. I, I've been through this with you and Dorian before. The way she guilts you into feeling bad for yourself. I just don't want to see that happen to you again. It won't. I don't let Dorian push me around anymore, Joey. And I prefer to leave it at that. Whatever you want. <sighs> Look, I didn't mean to imply that you can't handle your own problems. In fact, well, it's more and more obvious that you can, to me. Really? Yeah. I miss you, Kelly. It'd be really great if we could spend a little time together. Would you consider having dinner with me tonight? Busy, I'm sorry. Ian? No, actually, something else has come up. But, um, I wouldn't mind a rain check. Wow. 
Do you mean it? Yeah. I do. Great. I guess I'll have to just do roadies on my own tonight. <laughs> we had a lot of good ties there, did we? Yeah, we did. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I hope we will again. Maybe I can drive you to wherever it is you have to go. Thank you, but no, um, this is something I need to do alone. Well, it's a bit expensive for just a wreath of holly. Don't you want your diner to be festive? Well, none of those prices. You know what? I think I'll just take these. Yes. Yeah. Carlotta! Hey, uh -huh. I thought that was you. Hi. Find some holiday cheer? Oh, yeah. Just, you know, for the diner. Mistletoe? Oh, um... Well, that's, uh... Thank you. That's for personal use. Oh, so uh, things are good between you and Hank. We're, uh, hanging in there. Oh, I'm so glad. I was sort of wondering, given how busy you both are. Mm -hmm. In fact, I tried to reach Hank today with uh, a legal question, and as usual, he was in a meeting. Oh, that's my Hank, always with his nose to the grindstone. <laughs> you know, he's got a lot in his mind at the moment. Kidnapping of the twins was bad enough, but now that RJ's been suspected, it's just, just too much. RJ Gannon? Yeah. But, you know, Hank just doesn't believe that his brother could possibly be involved in something so despicable. But Bo doesn't agree. Apparently not. Look, I really have to run. I left Catalina alone at the diner. But, hey, let's, let's have dinner. I really want to hear all about you and Todd. I'd love to. I'm sure by then there'll be all sorts of d new developments between me and my husband. Hmm. Okay, the mail. Adios. And muchas gracias. That was even easier than I thought. It's open! RJ, I'm so glad to find you in. Taya Delgado, remember? I'm busy. Oh, well, this won't take long. Actually, I've been wanting to drop by for a few months now, but I've been so busy, I've hardly had the time for client development. Is that what this is about? <laughs> I have a lawyer, Gabriel Lomax. He handles all my business affairs. Of course, uh, but my specialty isn't corporate law. It's criminal. I'm well aware of your specialty, Miss Delgado. <laughs> How could I forget? Since you and your buddy, Nora, Tried to pin Carlo Hesse's murder on me. A couple of points. Um, Nora and I aren't buddies. I'm on my own now. Our courtroom styles weren't exactly compatible. For instance, I'm not willing to throw a case just because I've decided my client is guilty. I'm not judgmental about that sort of thing. Frankly, I don't care if my clients are guilty or innocent. My job is um, to ensure them a fair trial. Maybe you want to tell me what crime it is you think I've committed, Miss Delgado. Or maybe you prefer I commit a brand new one on you. Yeah, it's me. I gotta cancel the, uh, the travel plans that I made for me and my daughter this weekend. Well, what do you mean I gotta give you 24 hours notice? What? Well, fine. Keep the deposit. What do I care? Yeah, information. I, I need uh, uh, the number for... Uh, a caterer. Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't have to call you, would I? I, I, look, hey, I don't care, just, just pick the most expensive one, all right? Well, then, one that sounds expensive. <sighs> yeah, great, that, fine. Can, can you connect me and chart? Thanks. Yeah, this is Todd Manning. I, um, I need to set up dinner f for two. I'm gonna surprise my wife. So, Miss Stonecliffe uh, gave me a call this morning, and she wanted to know where Aunt Dorian was. But I told her that she was out of town, and didn't know when she was going to get back. That's good work. How does she sound? Not happy. Look, you guys, what is going on? Does this have anything to do with Aunt Dorian tampering with my mother's medication? Because I can't understand why she would do that to her own sister. Well, that's what we're trying to figure out. 
By looking into our grandparents' plane crash? It all ties in, Kelly. But it looks like now there wasn't a plane crash anywhere in Kentucky or in Ohio on the date of their deaths. And the clerk's office in Kentucky has no death certificates on record for Lewis or Sonia Kramer. But the undertaker in Ohio has copies of them, right? Charlotte Stonecliff gave him these. Well, maybe the Kentucky clerk lost the originals. No, because each death certificate has a number. And no numbers are missing. The records are complete. See, these numbers correspond to the actual death certificates I looked up in Kentucky. 4750642, 4750643. Same numbers, same date. Look at the names. Catherine Shock and Anthony Wilkinson. Who are they? They are the true owners of those death certificates. So, the copies the undertaker in Ohio had been given by Miss Stonecliff were phonied up. What are you saying? I'm saying that someone, most likely Charlotte Stonecliff, made copies of the actual death certificates in Kentucky and then whited out the information and filled in the names of Lewis and Sonia Kramer and the accidentals of their deaths. And then made clean copies. Wait, I'm confused. Does this mean that our grandparents didn't die in a plane crash? <sighs> That's what it looks like to me. Well, then how did they die? That is the $64,000 question.